That'll teach you to sneak up on people. I'm Jackie. It's like Joe versus the volcano, but with bazookas. I'm Justin. I left my heart on an island in the South Pacific because B.D. Wong took it out of my body. I'm Sam, and this is Men of War on Stinker Madness. What's that smell? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty as fuck. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty as fuck. Hey, look at me! Thrill me. If you come back in here, I'm gonna hit you with so many rights, you're gonna beg for a left. Thrill me. Big for that. Thrill me. Hey, look at me! No what? Hang on! It stinks. Hang on! Get to the Stinker Madness. Hello and welcome to Stinker Madness, the podcast about bad movies for bad movie lovers by bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin, with me are always Sam and Jackie. Uh, Men of War from 1994-ish. Four. Uh, starring Dolph Lundgren is the film this week. Sam's year in review movie from like year two, two or, or three, three <laughs> somewhere in there that's been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. Uh, uh, so going in, we're expecting a fun time and guess what? I think we got that. Uh, before we get too deep, I do want to say, um, you know, uh, want to, want to plug us, want to thank the people that do plug us, uh, by, Supporting us on Patreon, I do want to remind you guys that this podcast continually remains commercial free. There's no selling of Casper mattresses. There's no selling of square spaces or what else do the other podcast assholes do? Huge dildos. Huge dildo. I, I don't know, man. Sign me up for the contract on that one. I'll sell yeah, huge dildos. I- I push burgers on this thing all frequently, but they don't pay us. Yeah. So if you want to keep the show uh, commercial free, which actually it's going to be commercial free no matter what you do, uh, go to patreon.com forward slash sneaker madness and chuck a buck our way. Chuck a buck a month. Buck a month. The buck a month deal at uh, Sticker Madness. <laughs> yeah. Do you really need those $1 French fries? They're not even nearly as satisfying as a dollar for us. Right. As a Jackie French fry of lunacy. And the kids in the third world countries don't get all the money. Yeah, don't don't give it to Sally them. Sally Struthers gets it. And yeah, she, she eats it. So right. just give it to us. Right. Actually, there's that GoFundMe out there right now for those kids in uh, Rhode Island that are. If they did, did you did you see the thing about the thing? I didn't see the thing. So there was a GoFundMe when they raised nineteen thousand dollars for these grade school kids in uh, an impoverished uh, area who, if they didn't have a, uh, if they're student lunch debt the the student loan sharks for yeah. lunch if they weren't paid up in full they didn't get lunch they got uh they got jelly sandwiches that's what you get if you if you didn't have a paid off loan with the fucking lunch lady so the people people put together nineteen thousand dollars and paid off all their debt because Good. people are nice what's wrong just jelly just jelly just jelly and and wheat bread that's your lunch and I think it was just water. Like, it's like like what you get at prison, like bad prison, like gulag. So do you think that if they would not raise that money, they would have started breaking little kids' fingers? Yeah. Timmy, report to the cafeteria. No, no. Or Jimmy, bring $20. Jimmy Six Knees is going to break mine again. He has six knees. Yeah. That's how he uses, he uses his knees to break your knees. Like right, a, exactly. So Jimmy... Like Six knees works. <laughs> grinder of knees. <laughs> so if you don't uh, feel like supporting the children in Rhode Island that uh, can only eat gross food, uh, support us. Check a buck our way. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Jinker Madness. Uh, and thank you to everybody that already does. Sam, what can you tell us about Men of War, if anything at all? Oh, well, there's a number of things to okay. find out about. Uh, Dimension Films actually bought it from somebody else who was making it. Okay. Um, I guess I should start with that it was a spec script written by John Sales. Yes, uh, John twice Sales? nominated for Academy Awards, uh, specifically for Lone Star and Passion Fish, which he also directed. I've never seen either of those. Lone Star is very good. Oh, okay. Uh, Sunshine State is very good as well. John Sales is a real auteur. Okay. Uh, right. But and it's like, well, how the fuck did he do this? Well, you know, he started out and he had to work, and yeah, so he worked bills. for Corman. He wrote Piranha. Ah, yeah. He also uh, wrote Battle Beyond the Stars. Oh, and The Howling. 
wow <laughs> yeah and then he started doing really really good movies <laughs> then he got good at writing he got good or at, less hungry or he was like oh if i'm going to direct my own work it doesn't have to be the howling or <laughs> that'll be on the stars right. <laughs> um but this was a spec script that he had written and it was i think one that he would i don't think it was for it, it might have been for corman because the difference between the rewrites that the other two writers had done is they added more action. Originally, the only action sequence was the end. Okay. This was all just build up. Right. Which right. would have been a total Corwin thing to do because it's like... Corwin. Corman. Corman. Corman, sorry. Corwin. Jeez Louise. Corwin, the regional car dealership that you've never heard of. <laughs> Jimmy Sixnies is going to pay you a visit because he works for Corman. He has a station wagon that he got there on 4.9% <laughs> APR. Uh... <laughs> So this gets chopped around. Nobody buys it. Somebody buys it. They start making it, and then Dimension ends up, and Miramax ends up buying it halfway through production. The budget was originally $6 million, and this is supposed to go to theaters, and they're like, oh, oh the test screenings are great. This is going to be a great deal. We're going to put it in theaters. Oh, wait, it's telling Dolph Lundgren. He won't put butts in seats. We're not going to put it in theaters. Yeah, because this is after – I mean, this is in the middle of his – this the, is the front end of his disappearance from film. As basically. good as you could have done with the Lundgren return of the theater would have been this thing. Right. And they chickened out. Because Showdown's already been out by now. Yeah. And that's probably, but well, that was the last one in the theaters before he teams back up with Stallone. I don't even know if Showdown got wide. I think yeah. it got limited. Right, right. So if they were going to do as, this, is, this could have done as well as you were going to do, but, um, even then, at $6 million, you're still going to get it back instantly in the direct-to-video market, sure. which is where they went with it. Ah. Although it is a little bit expensive for a DTV movie mm -hmm. at the time. And right. you can tell when you watch it that it's, it looks a little bit better than most of the DTV movies that right. are happening. Right. Uh, one of the other symptoms of it not initially being planned for DTV is the cast of thousands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would say the only, the only person that's sort of like the weak link is somebody else that used to write for... Corman, uh, Perry Lang, the director, mostly directs TV stuff. Oh. And he's an actor as well. He uh, put himself not so Hitchcockian as he has a bunch of lines. He's the glasses exec. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. the director as ah. well. Yeah. Oh, yes. But, I mean, we've Peter got... Peter Lang. Uh, Perry Lang. Per Perry Lang, uh, brother of Fritz Lang, I believe. Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, would have to be like a son or grandchild because they're not at all the same age. All right. Fritz Lang <laughs> did them a while ago. Oh, mm, uh, I sure. guess the timing is... You, you see uh, Potato Potato, let's just say. Okay. <laughs> Dead guy, alive guy. Be beg to disagree. <laughs> beg, to, beg to disagree. <laughs> A degree to agree to disappropriate. <laughs> um, <laughs> so his counterpart in the dickhead department was Thomas Gibson, who's gone on to do all sorts of TV. B.D. Wong, of course, who's been in every goddamn From thing. From mostly Jurassic Park fame. And he does. he's in every Jurassic Park and every Law and Order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, in like, he's not in just like SVU. He's in like all of them. And then in SVU is finally like, oh, just put B.D. Wong in it all the time <laughs> right. now. He's, he's been also in, in Hemlock Grove. Oh, isn't that a prime? Show? That is a Netflix original. Oh, OK. Yeah, there you Interesting. go. Interesting. Uh, Charlotte Lewis, we just watched not very long ago when we tried to suffer through Golden Child. She yes. was the love interest in that. Yes, she was. Um, Trevor Goddard. Trevor Goddard. He's is. the guy with the cross. He's the bad guy. Oh, oh, Kano. Kano yeah. from Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat. Yeah. Who would later team up with the gal in this, Catherine, Catherine Bell, who was a it girl for a while. She was Maxim cover over and over again. Yes, she was. Both her and Trevor Goddard were in JAG. Okay. I never watched that show. Yeah, I didn't either, but I saw her on the cover of Maxim, and then I sure. was like, oh, if I open that up, she won't be naked. Where's the Playboy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here's some bad dating advice. <laughs> yeah. It's not even bad dating. It's a chart. Right. <laughs> because you can't even, like, read a paragraph about right, dating. Exactly. You need a chart. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, like, five boners versus four boners. <laughs> So you end up at Texas Roadhouse versus Applebee's. Jackie, have you ever seen a Maxim? No. It's the Axe body spray of, <laughs> of magazines. This they're sounds awful. awful. Oh, they were awful. They but were man, bad. they were hot shit back in the day. You couldn't go into somebody's apartment, you know, college dorm yeah. room without a stack of Maxims hanging around. 
Well, I mean, I've seen the magazine. I just never bothered to pick it up because it, it looked like a sexist pig magazine. Yeah, you don't really read anything in Maxim because there's there's there's, there's not words. syllabic words. Yeah, there's yeah. pictures Max, and yeah. flowcharts. <laughs> yeah, there's and then women in bikinis. Uh-huh. It's like, and then they were everywhere. People were like, oh, we got to have you don't like that. I'm like, no, I don't. I like <laughs> the women all the way naked, and I can read words. Yeah, I don't like that magazine. I'm stupid. I like it when the women are fully naked and peeing on other women. Jeez. Yeah, you know what? That's There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you like. Water sports are big in different parts of the country. Late as 90s humans. penthouse. I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah. That's like, do, do, do. Oh, this is how this is. Why is she peeing again? <laughs> What, yeah, he did look like he wasn't covered in pee. Because that's the only thing that you're solving by being. I bet you. I bet you that, that like if if we can take a running tally of reoccurring jokes on this podcast after six years, the penthouse peeing thing is probably among the top ten. Yeah, like, and hus- whichever one the hustler. We barely go like thing. three weeks without talking about. Like that. yeah, and then they just start pissing on each other. You're like, wait, is it page six already? God damn it, I thought I wasn't there yet. <laughs> I didn't even get done with the letters. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that cast of thousand. Tony Zeus Lister. Of uh, course. Kevin Teague. Kevin Teague from uh, Roadhouse. Yep. Yeah, the bad guy in Roadhouse. He stinks. Tim Guinea, which is the, uh, or Guinea, maybe? I don't know. He's the Australian guy who's not really Australian. Anthony Dennison does a lot of gangster movies. He plays a gangster who's a mercenary in this. Oh, the guy from Brooklyn. Yeah, and then yeah. the other, uh, Tom Wright, the right-hand man. Weird. Mm-hmm. And, of course, our, I don't know who Aldo Sambrell is. I've never really seen him before, but we should mention him because he's the guy that plays the Mexican pirate oh that God. just doesn't fit into this he's plot amazing. at all. And is one of the highlights of the film. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah. Okay, anything else? Not Best costume. No. Who? Best costume. Oh, uh, pi- Mexican pirate, totally. Mexican pirate. Is he a Mexican pirate or is he a pirate Mexican? I feel like he's a pirate first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think he's a pirate Mexican. Yeah. Because then if he's a Mexican pirate, he's just a pirate who's dressing like a Mexican, I think. I don't know how I don't know how that works. Yeah, I know that he I'm going to go with have... pirate Mexican. OK, fine. He's a pirate Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> a Mexican of pirate uh, distinction. Sure. <laughs> with gold teeth. Right. He's, he's outlandish. obviously some kind of successful pirate, right? He's, he's got gold well. teeth. Yeah. He seems like he's somewhat successful for X amount of time, and then he's not very <laughs> successful. That, even that's debatable. I mean, yeah. some things happen to this guy that seems like he's doing pretty good. Like, yeah. wow, I don't think I could do that. Um, all right. Well, there you go. Uh, Men of War from 1994. Thank you for listening. I already did that part. Did we do it again? Now we're just ending the podcast now. Oh, oh, okay, you're like, yeah. yeah, that's it. Men of War. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. That's the way you made it sound like, and we're done. Yeah. Thanks Anti- for listening. Anticlimactic. Um, all right. So bang, bang, bang. That's the whole movie. It starts out in Chicago, uh, which, again, just looks miserable to be in or live at. I'm sorry, Chicago people, but why do films choose to make Chicago look unlivable like a barren post-apocalyptic wasteland? So you know what happens? Um, they go to Chicago to film. Okay. Like, we're going to make this town look great. And then they take the lens cap off the camera and they turn the camera on and Chicago's in front of it. I mean, it looks like it's four degrees there and constantly snowing in yeah. every movie. Now, they need to make a movie in Chicago in spring or something when right. people seem to be having a nice time. Yeah, well, that, that three-month window where P- Chicagoans are happy. Yeah. I went to the Chicago in spring. Yeah. And I watched a bum steal somebody's sandwich right over the railing of the restaurant. Damn. He was eating a Monte Cristo. Was he like a ninja bum or something? Because that it's, seems you know, challenging. It's, it's like one of those offenses that is about as high as the table, you know? Uh-huh. So the guy is sitting there. He's he's talking on his cell phone. He turns like turns his head a little bit, right? Not really watching. The bum runs across the street, grabs his sandwich, and takes off. So would he be a ninja bum or a bum ninja? Bum Ninja kind of seems like a ninja with a sports injury. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a ninja with a sprained ankle. We're gonna have to put him down. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's gonna be on he's gonna be on the sidelines for a while. Use his own katana to kill him. <laughs> that was my favorite experience from Chicago. Hey, that's was, a good. That's a good. And a Monte Cristo. That's like, isn't that like turducken inside of French toast? Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's... Deep fat fried. Um. So Dolph Lundgren is a 
Merc. I don't know if he's retired, but he seems to be pretty grumpy about being a Merc. He doesn't want to really do it anymore. Sure. I put that life behind me. And his now life consists of just hanging out on the streets of Chicago and stuffing cocaine-laced skull into his mouth and just hanging out drinking in the middle of town. Uh, Also, in the fun facts for this, it says, you see Dolph Lundgren stick chewing tobacco in his bottom lip. It's very uncommon. Most people put it in their top lip. What? When? Who Who said said that that? ever? Have they seen a baseball game one time? One time. One baseball game. Gravity is going to make that difficult. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm I'm not going to lie. Every now and then I enjoy a delicious can of uh, Skull Chew. And if you want to, well, I guess we can't really take money. Eh, It's the internet. They can pay us, right? You know? Who cares? We're the internet. It's the wild west of advertising. Anyways, I like, you know, I'll have a chew every now and then. uh, And uh, eventually you just can't keep it in your bottom lip. So I like to shuffle it around a little bit while it's in there. It's also one of those, like, the more you get into it and the more and more you do. Yeah. There also, there just ends up being only one spot for it when you're jamming right. half a can at it's once. rotted your lip away yeah. so much that there's a nice pocket. And that's in the side <laughs> of your mouth and your cheek and the bottom. And then that's where it ends up if you get serious about it. Yeah. And then you just swallow the whole thing. Ah, delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm. You don't get worms. <laughs> that's true. Oh, perk. <laughs> There's other perks. The 10 minutes of uh, spots that you see from <laughs> eating a whole can of Copenhagen without spitting any of it out. Uh, okay, so he's not up to much, I guess. <laughs> no, it goes through like some, like he has a day where he says no to some people, and then he goes and talks to the guy from Roadhouse and plays chess or whatever, and then he goes back to the next day, and his daily routine is just getting drunk and walking around. Standing outside. He also dresses like he is an orphan from Uh England. Right, right. Please, sir, can I have another can of chew? A little bit more porridge. Can I put some cocaine in the porridge? But there's nothing that he's going to be able to do because he starts off the day with, like, a pint of booze. Uh Uh-huh, some undisclosed booze. And then fills up a flask... At least one. Right. And then just starts wandering around. With cocaine-laced chewing tobacco in his mouth. He is... This guy's on stuff. He's... <laughs> the only thing he's missing is a joint. Like, he should be smoking weed to cover all the bases. I think he's past that. <laughs> I think he is, too. He's, he's probably got fucking... Two, he's just got, like, angel dust intravenously feeding through his system <laughs> right. in his jacket all the time. <laughs> And just in case the nicot- or the skull starts to fail, he's got a nicotine patch right on his sack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we just thought it was cocaine. It was PCP and LSD. Right. Yeah. He's just wandering around, flying everywhere. <laughs> um, it's okay, so these guys pull up. These limo guys. What are we going to call this pair? The... I think I called them the dickheads. Already. Yeah, the dickheads. Okay. The, the dickheads. Ministry of Dickheads. The Ministry of Dickheads. They want him, to, they want to hire him for a job, uh, an undisclosed job, because they are in resource mining of some sort. But he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but we, you'll want to do it as soon as you hear who we got your name from. He's like, I know who you got my name from. And goes and visits that guy, his mentor, his old sure Colonel Hogan, as it were. He also does his first time with it's Swedish, just like me joke. Right. When he's talking to them. Yeah, when he's talking about the booze. Um, so he goes and visits Colonel Guy. Whoever. Colonel Fye. Guy. Fye. <laughs> Colonel Fi. Colonel Fi. Well, his name is Kevin Feige. No, that's not Kevin Feige. Ke- uh, the guy that produces all the yep, no, adventures oh, movies. Hey, <laughs> yeah, hey, Tige. Kevin okay. Tige. So his name is Colonel Ty <laughs> from Battlestar Galactica. Sweet. Sweet. That guy can drink. <laughs> yeah, he can. Colonel Ty gets fucking loose. <laughs> so does his wife. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> like four people are like, dude, Battlestar. Uh-huh. This guy's rule. <laughs> Everybody else is like, the fuck is Battlestar? What? Uh, anyways, so he's like, hey, dude, you you know, you can't get away from your life, man, Rambo. You you can't go build monasteries in, in Bangkok. You, you, this is part of you. It's in your yeah. blood. It's like, do I look like I'm building monasteries? 
No, I am drinking all day long. I am not enjoying it's myself. It's a metaphor, goddammit! You're a merc! You're gonna want to be a merc! Yeah. So take the job! I guess that's... He does. Yeah. He doesn't even really think about it after that. Because the next thing is he's building a team. Yeah, it's weird. The like, it doesn't... Making... I'm, I'm with you that it is weird, because... I'm going to interject here. It goes from, you should take the job. He doesn't say, yeah, I'm going to take it. Right. Or, you know what? You're right. It just goes to Illinois. He's building the fucking expendables. And I... then we get these clips of these dudes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? By the time we get to the one that's fighting in Thailand, it's like, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> he's the last guy. Right. You don't figure out that he's team building until he's done. You're like, oh, so he said yes. And these are his guys. Right. Why is he taking that one guy out of prison? Right. Why is he getting Zeus Lister? Um, he seems like a problem right off the front end. Probably doesn't have the best referrals in the Merc trade. You know, whatever yeah. whatever website you go to to hire mercenaries. Uh, Neighborhood.com. <laughs> Nextdoor.com, you mean? Yeah, nextdoorneighbor.com. <laughs> That's where you get Mercs? Okay. Yeah. Um. Hot or not. <laughs> yeah, <hot> or <laughs> gotta swipe a white or left whether or not you would hire them. Yeah. If they don't have an M60 in the picture, swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> and a tiger behind him, of course. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he puts together his team. I'm going to call them the Explodables. Yeah. Hey, oh, you know, I sat on that one this whole time, guys. Oh, good. I was, I was waiting patiently to deliver that gem of comedy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like. I'm not impressed. It wasn't a good joke, it turns yeah, out. As it turns out. <laughs> as it turns out, it fell kind of flat. The explodables. <laughs> they also kind of fall flat. Um, mm -hmm. So they head over to take over this island. And the the deal is, is that there's, I guess, villagers living on the island. And the, uh, the dickheads can't mine its resources Unless they either get the villagers off the island or kill all the villagers. Is that where I we are? I think they're supposed to just give them the mining rights by then signing why send a piece mercs? of paper. Why send mercs? Because they not? won't fucking they sign won't it. Fucking do send it. men whose job is to actually negotiate deals like this. They've tried that and it didn't work. Huh. They even floated up a new garbage heap that they could build into their home. So and I didn't notice it until we watched it again, but there is actually a line of dialogue that addresses this way later where she's like, you've been to so-and-so Island, which is where we're about to go uh -huh. first. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, that's why we're not signing. Okay. Oh, because it destroyed that other Island with yeah. the prostitution. Like, uh... And okay. All they right. They signed the paper. Okay. So let me get this straight. The dickheads yeah. can't mine this Island's resources. Yep. Without a signature on a legal document. Yes. And so if you don't sign the legal document, we're going to murder you quite illegally. Yes. More so illegally than if you just go into the island and start mining its resources. Well. Why not just mark the paper with an X and be like, look, they signed. Yeah, they signed it. And they'll be like, that's not a signature. Be like, they can't read or write. Right. Done. What the fuck do you yeah, want? Notarize this motherfucker. It's going to the bank of lunch ladies i mean if you're gonna be diabolical right you might as right. well just fucking you're, screw them you, and then you show up with your crew these people are not if you're gonna murder an entire population of of peoples you probably don't care about how legal the document is this is this is stage two of three stage <laughs> three is exactly where you guys are going and the movie goes there so there's that it doesn't make any sense Either way. I just I didn't take the notes from the Reba Banana Republic people. Right? Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Gotta have your signature. <laughs> no, you're going to kill these people. Um, so they're headed to, to take over the island. and But they get, I guess they go to the other island, the bad island that got decimated. They pit stop. They pit stop for 16 hours to for have a little power. hookers. Out. Yeah. And for one of them to just get completely stoned out of his gourd. Right. And shenanigans, because this trip to the bar turns into a pretty big bar fight, like a Chuck Norris style bar fight. Like yeah. everybody gets their ass kicked and thrown into the ocean, basically out the side wall. But you should mention one of the best parts of the scene. Well, two that I noticed. Mm -hmm. Number one, check your guns in, get half 
of a nudie play card. Right, right. Yeah. Which I thought was clever. It's your if I ever ticket. open up a uh, any kind of establishment, that's how you're going to get your coat back is mm-hmm. half of a nudie card. Okay, all right. <laughs> what about your guns? <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, well, hope, I'll just let you take those in. You never know who's going to be in there. Today's society, you never be too careful. And uh, the second thing I noticed was that all of the prostitutes are in see-through negligees. Right. And you'd see everything. Sure. Poop, like... Poop? <laughs> you can see poop? You can see their poop. Yeah, you can see... No, that's it's not... It's like an x-ray... It's an x-ray bikini, <laughs> but instead of... If they're already just naked under there, you see further is the problem. And so instead of seeing the hot stuff, you just see poop. The great superpower debate. I just I just yeah. came up with one. You have x-ray vision, but the only thing you can see is what somebody ate earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure that used to be a burrito. Well, ah. Uh, <laughs> Jack, you can see pubic hair. That's what I'm trying to get at. Pubic hair and pooper. She was going to say pubic hair. <laughs> pubic, pubic hair. <laughs> um, and then I liked that the one hooker was like, "Hey, you want to be friends? That costs more." Yeah, yeah. Stop talking fuck? to me. Well, let's do that. And twenty dollars to fuck seems pretty reasonable. Oh, I think that's for a uh, 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 low quality hooker. I think you know. You, I think you can find twenty dollar hookers still in the United States. Fantastic. <laughs> so if you are so if you're a listener or you have paid for a hooker and you want to tell us how much you charge, just leave it on the, I, the Facebook. I know literally That's what we need is people are like, I paid two hundred dollars and she didn't have any teeth. Felt bad about myself afterwards. <laughs> Where are these twenty dollar hookers? <laughs> Do you have a directory or a business card? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I know absolutely nothing about hookers, so yeah, I'm probably no. not the authority on on any of that. Um, <laughs> I did see a hooker one time. She was helping out a trucker. Um, <laughs> Changing his tire. He, he drove to her house. Who drives to a hooker's house? Why not? I don't know. Well, it's like, why would you drive to a whorehouse for the same reason? Yeah, but, like, there's other whores there, and, like, I don't know, you don't... Dude, if you're a one-man operation, Brenda's house. Maybe Brenda hasn't expanded from her one single or, white trailer to an actual establishment. So she's like, I gotta start somewhere. It's like when you start a business from your garage. Yeah, I guess <laughs> it really is. Why would if that's your job? Why would you leave? I guess, yeah, you work like, from home. Dress up and then go somewhere. No, just come over. Dress get down done. and don't go anywhere. Yeah, the is. garage door is open. You know it. You're. I'm available. Yeah, if this uh, this garage is a rocket. Yeah. I'm banging a John. You can hear Quiet Riot out of the bedroom window. Just wait a minute. <laughs> I only do truckers, so it won't take very long. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, they get in this big fight because Catherine Bell comes in and Brooklyn falls in love with her instantly. And so. Is that the case or are they like this is their how she gets onto teams with him? Oh, it's a it's a setup. Yeah, like it seems their old like pals. They, they're old pals, and this is like their... She's Lando Calrissian? This is their con to get her onto the team. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I thought. Okay, what did you think, I like Jackie? it. I thought she was a rando that was in there, and he protected her from the pirate Mexican, uh-huh. and he was immediately enamored with her, because he stands up, right, and he's like, oh, like, ooh la la. Or is that just and then the pirate the guys, game? pirate guy stands up and does the same thing. So I'm assuming that... They don't know one another. Here comes this hot chick. She's coming into the bar, and he's going to save her from the pirate. Mm, okay. Either way. Swashbuckling uh, they, for later. They beat the hell out of everybody. And, including the pirate. Including the pirate. And they take the fight outside, and outside is Kano. Uh, and he has a team of his own men. Kiefer. Kiefer, whatever. I like Kano. Um, he's the... And he's running this island, is that yeah, right? He's like the sheriff of Poon, Poon, Poon Island. Yeah. <laughs> because it seemed like know. he was feigning tough. I don't know. Or maybe he's just a really nice guy. But he <laughs> He seemed really nice. He seems like a great nice guy who murders people for no reason. But it seemed like he was laying the psycho on a little thick. Oh, and it's the, great. And the macho well, that is okay, right? But the macho I'm a man. Oh, I loved it. Uh, a little too thick. And so I thought, well, maybe it's he's... It's all too thick, Jackie. Whatever 
Trevor Goddard is doing is too much, and it's yeah. fantastic. If He's he... like a piece of carrot cake. You can never have enough cream cheese frosting on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. like, okay. That's a Jackie analogy. A Jack analogy. Jack analogy. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever his brand of psycho is just like, I'm sure he did it once, and then now he's typecast as it. Yeah. Before, he actually died of a drug overdose in 2003. Oh, uh, that sucks. Um, so no more of his special brand of awesome. Yeah, I guess the only thing I've ever seen him in is this in Mortal Kombat, but he's basically the same character in both. Yeah. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, he's he was fantastic. Um, So he's outside, and he's like, all right, you guys are all going to prison, hard la- labor camp. And they're like, what? What the fuck? All these guys are still alive. And he's like, nope, no, they're not. Bang. And he shoots one of his own guys. Now you're now you're here for murder. We just saw you do that. You didn't even have to do that. You could have just thrown us in prison and say that we murdered yeah. a guy. You didn't actually have to even murder a guy. you even have paperwork, sir? <laughs> he, do you? He didn't even like that guy. He was like, this is my chance. This is my chance for that fucker plogging up the toilet right. and not saying anything. And then when I went in there to take a shit this morning, the toilet wasn't available. So I had to go to the, the Burger King. I'm getting this motherfucker. Yeah. So Dolph pulls a Jon Snow and challenges him to an honor duel. This yeah. is between you and me. So let's have an honor duel. But there's no honor in this. Fight. No, he'll, he he may he. He rewrites the rules. <laughs> the one rule. The one. There's just one rule. It's gonna be longer than the rule if I say it, and I will. Your guys can't do anything, and I get to punch you. And if you do anything back, we'll shoot your guys. Right. So basically, oh. I'm just gonna punch you a bunch until I get tired of it. It's a punch bunch. And he does. And then he just leaves. Leaves all of his men behind. <laughs> he just takes and off. And takes his own motorboat without his shirt still he leaves that behind i guess i'll gather that for him he as doesn't well. even beat up Dolph lundgren enough that he's really that injured it's no. just like he's fine the next day he just sort of like slaps him until his skin turns pink just right. to warm him up and then right. he's like hell yeah bitches and rides off in this motorboat with the peace symbol on. right <laughs> like dude you actually you sentence them to six months in a labor camp and you reduce their sentence to some light slapping. <laughs> and then a little. left your clothes on the dock <laughs> and your men and just fucked off in a boat. I don't think you're capable of running yeah. this island. Well, you know, somebody's got to stay behind and clean up the dead body. Just push him off the pier. Let the fish have him. That's true. <laughs> wonder if there's like a post cut, like in the story world of this movie, what actually happens is everybody's like... Did he just leave these guys here? And then so like he speeds back by and then all of a sudden he's got like some fucking hair metal like blasted <laughs> out of the boat. <laughs> just like, yeah, like it's his thing. He's just like, this is him peacocking. Right. And then like goes in a cove and then all of a sudden comes back. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and after he does it four or five times, like one of the guys picks up his clothes and he's like, he's almost done. Right. <laughs> he goes like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and then they leave. <laughs> My, oh, God, I hate this job. <laughs> Why did we take this work? <laughs> this guy just shoots us the his dick about it. Yeah. <laughs> so the next day, I guess, you know, back to operation whatever. whatever. <laughs> and so they're on their fucking boat, which is like a like a big fishing boat. It's a freighter. Yeah, they, yeah they're on a fucking freighter. It's not a huge freighter, but it's a cargo boat. It has a... It has a crane. There's no right. other rigging. It's meant for, even if it's not huge, it's meant for cargo. Yeah. So, and and like some fishermen's out in the water and they're like, hey, who's that? So Dolph grabs a fucking rocket launcher. He's like, I, I'll take care of it. We can't chance it. Chance what? Isn't it the guy? Yeah, it's. They don't know. Oh. They don't know who it is. But either way, chance what? We can't chance yeah. it. That they'll see us? I guess. They saw you at the pier where his clothes are Mm -hmm. still and on the other side of this you have the bad guy and the mexican pirate now in cahoots right because they found the national geographic that has the word jade written on the cover (laughs) right and they've put it together that's what these guys are after they're here for jade meanwhile that magazine was at the bar they didn't bring it 
Right. It just showed up and it was there. It was. I, I, the only thing I brought was my guns in this National Geographic. No, it was the Bars magazine. Yeah. Because National Geographic had already been there. Yep. And they're on an island. Uh huh. Where it was taken over. Uh-huh. To get its resources. They yeah. know what. They know it's not Jade. But now it's Jade. These guys are fucking idiots. They know that two and two is able to be put together. Right. They don't know what you get. You just, they've got two. They've got two. They're ready to go. Yep. Oh, boy. Okay. So, fortunately, they don't blow them up uh, because that would have ended the movie, I guess. Um, <laughs> they were too far away. Right. We need to know that the, the max range for this rocket launcher is 492 meters. Something like that. Yeah, so. Not 600. Because it's going to come into play later. And that also Catherine Bell's character is. A great military mind as well as kick ass or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it takes them all day to get to the island. Like, they are they leave Whore Town yeah. and get on a freighter and then go across the harbor, I guess. And it takes them an entire day because now it's nighttime. No, they, they get to the beach. They just need... And that's not because the boat's slow. <laughs> it's just because they need... The penicillin to take effect. Oh. So they don't spread it to the other island. Gotcha. Yeah. That's very considerate of uh-huh. that. <laughs> so they infiltrate and they're they're uh, acting like they're invading fucking Normandy, but there's a guy taking a piss and he sees them and he's like, Oh hey, what's up, guys? You lost? It's BD Wong. It's BD Wong. Who is either in charge, like he's the elected official of the Islanders or just the only guy who speaks English. There's, she, his sister or whatever speaks English too. True. So he's in charge kind of. Not really. The old people are. Oh, the wise men. Yeah. So he's a ambassador of wise men. He's just a sass mouth. Okay. He's a kid who went to San Francisco and waited tables so he can speak English. So when national geographic came, he was like, Oh, I can speak English. Mm-hmm. And then he made his, Wormed his way into the elder's ears, and now he's somebody in the village. Okay. All right. I like it. So he's like, all right, come on in. You can hang out with us villagers. Uh, we're glad to see you. I don't know why we're glad to see you, but we're acting pretty friendly to you. Um, let's meet up and have a conversation tomorrow, and I'll take you on a tour of the island. Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought we were going to have to blow you guys away. We were yeah. hired to come in here and... Blow you guys away. Just lean on them a little bit. But you're being pretty cool right now, so I'm having a hard time blowing you away. So. Yeah. It's weird. It's a weird shift in the film. Yeah, they've, uh, they're making a power play. The Islanders? Or yeah. The Mercs? What's the, what's really the play? They shifted the uh, what's dialogue. What's the play here, Sam? Well, they, they're making them feel like these guns don't matter. Only words matter. Sort of signatures i don't know i don't know where you're going with this yeah <laughs> i don't know where they're going with this either so they go they go take a tour uh in the morning and uh the rest of the crew just kind of chill with the islanders they, they become one they play some football they uh fall in love with the various uh peoples and uh, cultures some of them do drugs. Some of them get real fucked up. Mm-hmm. This part is just sort of inconsequential. And it's boring. There's also it's pretty consequential. This is pretty much the whole movie. They're going to get to where eventually, you know, everybody's like, wow, what great people, da-da-da-da-da. And then there's the mountainers, and all, now Dolph Lundgren has to go up the mountain. Right. And he's got his right-hand man. Seems to be a very capable mafia guy on here. Lady who knows a lot about things. Mm -hmm. A guy who's high as shit on reefer, but (laughs) seems like he's mostly calm and able to make decent decisions. Uh And then the craziest fucking shit bird that you got on the planet. And he's like, that guy's in charge. He do whatever he says while I'm gone, while I'm up on the mountain. And everybody looks at him like him, him. He's the guy. This is the guy that's in charge. He's just, he's just, stabbing a tree right now this is gonna be a problem this is gonna this is he's worse than tom berenger in platoon he has in shots he's just sort of like chewing on his barrel breathing heavy because he's going through murder withdrawals he has murder withdrawals he keeps asking 
uh, Dolph, like, dude, when are we going to blast these fools? Yeah. I, I came to blast fools. And Dolph's mm -hmm. like, no, you came to get paid. You're a mercenary. You don't, your job requirement isn't shoot people. And that's what you get yeah. paid. No, you do stuff and you get paid to do it. If we shoot these people, you're not getting paid. And he's like, I don't care. Remember when you got me out of prison where it didn't matter how much money I had? Uh-huh. My payment is letting me shoot people. Uh, murder is my fee. Uh-huh. Now I'm in charge. Now I'm in charge. Okay, so I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Seems like a I'm going to be plan. on top of a mountain. Everybody's confused except for the guy that smokes reefer and is like, yeah, I'm going to go over here now because that guy's fucking nuts. Well, they give uh, the reefer guy some leaves of some sort. Yeah, because he got shot in uh, the pirate invasion. Because oh, we haven't gotten the, the night pirate. before. No, the You've skipped the pirate the invasion. The pirate invasion guy happened last the first night while they're eating dragon eggs that I guess aren't that don't taste very good as a practical joke by the islanders and uh the pirate guy invades with his men and start yeah. causing explosion and weed guy gets shot in the shoulder so he has to take fucking whatever weird leaf that makes him really fucking lose his shit i yeah. mean at the end of it he is naked and he falls face first into the water yeah, he has a noah party I mean, it's that kind of party where you take all your clothes off and then pass out in the ocean face down. Yep. <laughs> Wake up and your ass is sunburnt. <laughs> and you're drowned. And you're like, I need more of those leaves. I can't. My ass is really sunburnt. <laughs> You've got a starfish on your face. Got a starfish on your groin. Yeah. They feel better right there. Uh, Call it the old five finger C job. You're got barnacles on your on your rib cage now. You've been yep. out there for that long. Um, <laughs> it's all fun and games, so you try to pull them off. <laughs> right. It's not like leeches. Yeah, so fucking pirate guy. Yeah. He is escaping during this invasion on his like fucking four winds boat. And this is not a seafaring <laughs> vessel. No, it's not. <laughs> It's not even... How did he get there? In this motorboat? From where? I guess the other island's, like, right down the street. It doesn't... It takes them an entire day on a freighter. They're just waiting out the penicillin. I guess. I don't know. Either way... That freighter doesn't move very fast. <laughs> Things slow as shit. We're up to two knots, sir. Yeah. All right. Oh, it seems a little too fast. <laughs> Slow her down. Throttle her back. <laughs> Can hear, can hear the gears grinding. <laughs> um, so as he's getting away, they bust out the rocket launcher, and Catherine Bell gets to fire it off. Yeah, and she, I get, I think she waits until it's at max range because she says right before she shoots, "Perfect." When yeah. he's at four hundred ninety-five meters, something like that. Yeah, blows his ass up. Yep, and then beyond, <laughs> like it explodes once. Then there's a secondary explosion that shoots the pirate man. Out of the right. boat <laughs> on fire. Right. Like, wow, that guy, that's a hell of a way to go. He got double exploded in a matter of seconds. Yeah. 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 Bummer. <laughs> he was great. I really liked his character. Uh huh. It's too bad that he just got blown up right there. <laughs> right. Twice. <laughs> yeah. Two times. <laughs> so now BD Wong gets it, though. He's like, I see. I see. If if we don't work with you, who, and you seem kind of cool, Dolph. Just other guys are going to come, and this yeah. is never going to stop. So let me take you up to the mountain folk, and that's how that gets going. There you'll bang my sister or friend or whatever, and you'll be like, oh, this is a nice island. Yeah, that's seriously what Dolph does. He goes and barely talks to the mountain people and then hangs out with B.D. Wong's sister's character. I actually did look up her character name. It's Loki. Yep. Yep. Who's Loki? Why is she Loki? You can't be Loki. Maybe they just didn't know how to spell low key, but that should be the other guy's name because he's high as fuck. Or maybe Looky, because Looky over here. Looky, Looky. <laughs> I'm not wearing a shirt again. They're nice. I looked her up because uh, I wasn't sure what else she was ever in. In the 1990s, she was voted in the top 10 by Shape Magazine's Best Bodies. Huh? Yeah. How about that? Fun fact. Um, anyway, yeah, so they, so they bone down. He's in love. Doesn't really seem like he gets much accomplished on getting the island signed over. I think he's starting to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I just kind of want to live here. I don't want to deal with this yeah. contract thing or 
people murdering anymore. I'm 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 pretty sold. The food's good ish, and uh, there's boobs. So Chicago just has snow and ice, real cold, and I could probably still do cocaine here. I don't see why that's gonna. They just go over to the next island. They probably got it over there. Right, right. The the best of everything. So, uh, meanwhile, on the freighter, the dickheads are on it. Yeah. And Kano, I guess they went to Kano and it was like. Kiefer. Kiefer. They went to Kiefer and said, hey, Dolph Lundgren's taking way too long. Can you mm, do something? I don't think that's what happened. What happens here? I think I, their freighter got shanghaied by Kiefer. Yeah. He just shows up and he's like, oi, what the fuck? And they're like, who are you? And he's like, I'm your fucking boss. <laughs> Oh, take it. Because that's what happens in this scene. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Why would he do that? Because he's a fucking maniac. Why, if he thinks there's Jade on this island, why does he need these guys? Because he still doesn't have the equal sign. <laughs> oh. He has the two. He has the two. He thinks they're supposed to be a plus. <laughs> and then there's another part that he's not sure he's about. very confused on the yeah, last Yeah, and bit. he's going to tell them that he knows. Oh, I know what to do with that, you boy. I'm going to let you run the show here a little bit. Rot, rot, rot. <laughs> Don't forget that he has a business card with a fax number on right. it. <laughs> it's just a joker from a playing a deck of playing cards, which is him being even more crazy because he's like, look, he's got the number on the back. And it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Like, oh, there's my number. There's a fax number. <laughs> there's not. It's like, look at the logo. Yeah, that's a joker. <laughs> it's on all the cards. Meanwhile... Guess who's not dead? Because <laughs> he's on the boat, too. The fucking pirate Mexican. Yeah, he's just crispy. He's just crispy after being exploded twice. You're like, hey. <laughs> you made it? And you're going to keep on trucking here? You're yeah. not going to like go to the hospital or something? He is covered from head to toe in burns because he got exploded twice and he yeah. just goes back to work. And you know what's great about this guy uh-huh. is that he has multiple pirate outfits because this, you know, the first one got burnt up. Right. He's got new pirate outfits. Yeah. He just goes in, gets the pirate shirt on, a little bit of a vest. And he's he's like shitty Wolverine because he's healed up. It's all scarred over now. Yeah. He didn't have to get that whole bodysuit of bandages where you're in a body cast and everything hurts. He just is like, yeah, I put some ointment on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> he just dumped some Vaseline and some vodka on there and he was good to go. That's uh, what I do when I have hurts. I'm like, huh, where's the when Vaseline? you have hurts? <laughs> I got the hurts. I got hurts. some hurts. Where's the vodka? <laughs> Oh man! So yeah, Kena, or Kiefer is now part of this corporation because he wants to partner because up. Because he had guys. locked one of the right. guys that was in it. That's how that works. Oh boy! And lo and behold, back on the island, Zeus Lister shows why he shouldn't have been put in charge because he starts freaking the fuck out and is like, "Gonna start shooting people" because I guess he's bored. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm tired of these people not doing what they're supposed to. Do you know what they're supposed to be doing right now? Getting shot by me. Right. <laughs> but they uh, are a strong-willed people, and they start burning down their own village before he can do it, uh-huh. which confuses him because he's like, oh, no, what do I do now? Right. And by the time he's really confused, Dolph Lundgren shows back up. Well, and a guy oh. chops his hand off. He's like, yeah. I don't need a hand. And he throws this this lady down. Uh-huh. And then the elder goes and gets an axe and chops off his hand and then goes, you need a hand? And tries to give it to him. Is it a joke? Like, ba da ba ba da da uh, yeah it's the shittiest <laughs> joke i've ever heard you don't have a hand i mean that's it was, commitment to comedy it's commitment yeah, he, <laughs> he cut his hand off he did and then he stuck it in a fire to burn the the burn the cauterize the wound mm-hmm. yeah. yeah later on it was funnier when he put his thumb in his own butt and ran around with a turkey tail yep that was that was, yeah, classic that was hilarious especially because everybody was eating those leaves that make you high as fuck i thought it was getting old after the fourth time he did it yeah yeah um, it was funny again when he <laughs> farted and it shot across the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's his own hand. Yeah. Uh, so Dolph shows up and is like, dude, knock it off. Seriously. This guy just cut his hand off for comedy's sake, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty funny. But seriously, dude, just chill out. And Zeus Lister makes poopy face. And, Man, I never get to do that one. Storms off. Yeah. Meanwhile, 
the dickheads have called Dolph over to the freighter mm-hmm. to have a conversation where they've got the same drinks and same shirts in front of them as when they just were talking to Kiefer, implying that Kiefer is still someplace on the boat. And why wouldn't he be on the boat? But they're like, so here's the deal. I guess we need you to step it up because we're here for one reason. Shit. We're uh, here for shit. Lots of minerals. Dolph Lundgren's like, I'm sorry? Yeah, you know how everybody's been saying that the island is covered in bird shit? Well, that's what we're here for. Bird shit. Yeah. And bat shit from all the caves. Yeah, there's bat shit in the caves. There's bird shit outside. We want all that bird shit. So we're going to mine this, this until there's just a hole in the ocean. Can what? you just scrape the shit off? Can you just get the shit? Yeah. Why do you have to mine? I don't get your mining technique. Like, we're going to transport all the rock, the earth, to it, our shit yeah. removal facility in Des Moines? <laughs> turns out the other people have a number two and a number two and don't have the equal sign either. And what are they I thought gonna- they were kidding, and so I didn't laugh at this. Everybody I, thinks that they're kidding. I'm like, what? That can't be true. They've got to be here for the jade. That makes sense, the right? The jade makes sense. And then they start going into, like, how valuable it is and blah 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 and they've got all these plans for this shit and i'm like bird shit oh they are not kidding yeah they call him an idiot you're like well they're serious they are really just here for bird shit what are they gonna do with the bird shit fertilizer if bird shit's so awesome how come my car isn't worth a million dollars because it's covered in bird shit always wrong kind of birds i guess it's so what this movie is about bird shit Huh. Yeah. Okay. So he's like, Dolph's like, dude, the fuck, dude? I'm not killing people over bird shit. This is fucking dumb. Yeah. So he just goes back to the island. He's like, all right, here's the deal, folks. Zeus, give me your big gun. Uh, I'm not going to murder these people, nor am I going to kick them off their island via dubious legal contract. Sure. Who's with me? Uh, I'm not. Well, actually, he doesn't even say who's with me. Like, a few people just decide to stay on their own. One of them is high as hell on unknown illicit <laughs> drugs, and he really likes them, so he's got an excuse. Sure, sure, sure. And then the rest of them are like, we're going to get you for this, Dolph Lundgren. We're going to go team up with Kiefer. Even though they don't know he's over there yet. They're Even just like, he yeah. We, well, he does say, if you want to get paid, go back to the boat. They're like, oh, I guess I did come here to get paid. You're so. not going to get paid. Job's not done. Well, they don't know that. <sighs> Idiots. They're mining bird shit. How smart do you think they are? There's no money. There's no money. These mercs are never going to get paid. No. Dude, trust us on this. When we get back to the States with all this bird shit, we're going to be sitting on a pile of money. What happened, what would have happened if they would have shot all the people and they got back to the boat, these two guys would have come out and they would have got them in on the Ascension Project. The Ascension Project. Yeah. They're like, now you guys are level two. (laughs) And if you want to get other people, like, if you want to really make money, you just need to get some people underneath you. Like, I just killed a bunch of natives to be in a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I've been made off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there they have the team splits up. And the next day, the Islanders are like, dude, here's the deal. There's a war coming. So we're going to go down and we're cave. And Dolph's like, what? The cave where the dead people are? And B.D. Wong's like, so earlier when I told you we were just a bunch of villagers that, uh, that were kind of ninny-ish and we just kind of like to play grab ass on the uh, on the beach, it turns out that the last time somebody came to this island, uh, we murdered them all and we're fucking tough as shit. So mm. check it. Check that out. I didn't want you to know that before, but now I want you to know that. So uh, we're down here in this cave where it's uh, basically a death trap for yeah. anybody that tries to come in here. So... Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they've got new fancy uh, death makeup on. Right. Yeah, they, they go all native right here. The guy that uh, is on the drugs, he's first in on the diaper and the makeup. Right. Yep. He's right. he's 100% vested. Where the other ones are like, well, I'll wear the clothes I have on, but you can paint my face. His and- right-hand man never even goes in on the paint face. He's just like, you know what? I got a gun. I'll help, but just leave me out of this. Yeah, dude. I'm not down with that. Before battle time, Kiefer comes in on a white flag, and guess who's on the fucking Zodiac with him? 
It's the guy from Rook. Colonel T. Yeah. Ty T. 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 He's the, he's the third partner in the shit corp. Yep. <laughs> shit corp. Hey. That shit incorporated. I uh I didn't want you to know that I worked for those guys earlier so that you would take the job because if you knew that I worked for those guys, you wouldn't take the job. I don't really understand my logic. Also, I'm basically here right now to just be a dick. Yeah. Like, I'm just here to be like, I'm going to shoot you and bye-bye. Uh-huh. No, like, terms were discussed. No, I think you should get out of here or I think uh, you should surrender or anything like that. It's just, what's up? I wanted you to know that I'm here and you're going to die. And I'm wearing wool from head to toe in the right, tropics. Why did I wear this? This was a very poor costume decision. Yeah. Well, he does give him a chance to back off. He's like, are you really going to fucking die for these people? He gives him a boat. But Dolph's like, no. Sort of. I mean, he also says, like, I envy you. You're going to die for something you believe in. Yeah. I'm going to shoot you over a bird ship. He's just kind of being a dick for no reason. And at this point, when they get back into the boat, right, because Kiefer lights their truce flag on fire, throws it into the ocean. Yeah, just shoot him right there. A little prematurely. A little prematurely. That's the end of the truce. They're not even down. They're not even off the island before he starts burning the flag. Just fucking kill them all right there. Just shoot them. That's when you shoot them. You got Zeus, Kiefer, and the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, God damn it. Only Scott Evil was in charge of every movie. Just, he's right there. Just shoot him. Just shoot him. Uh, but they come back minutes later with more guys and before like 50 that turn into like 120. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, before they even get to the Island though, Dolph uses the fucking rocket launcher and blows up an entire Zodiac filled with guys. Uh And then I guess says "Eh, that's good for now. Not the right ones either. Not the right ones. Why didn't he keep shooting rockets? Cause he likes the game. So he's, he's an ear necklace wearer. That's what you're saying. It's a chess match between him and wool pants. So he's just having fun now. Not He doesn't even care about the villagers. I he's guess. being just like tiny Zeus Lister then. Maybe. Hmm. Well, they land without any more troubles because I guess, oh, I got bored with the rocket, so I'm going to go back over here now. And But it still goes quite poorly. Oh, yeah. The team Kiefer loses 13 guys immediately by islanders uh half of them yep just get killed by rocks and sticks <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 13 to nothing and then you know there's some shooting and some trapping and Dolph comes out and starts hitting guys with what looks to be a grenade launcher right like mm-hmm. versus any other action movies there's always like he does have a sidearm uh-huh. and he uses it occasionally but his main armament is a grenade launcher and a rocket launcher. <laughs> and I think he kills more, much more guys with the rocket launcher. Usually in a movie, yeah. you get one use of the rocket launcher, uh-huh. and it's usually to explode the villain in a yeah. climactic sequence uh, or the villain's plane or the villain's chopper, or whatever. He's just using it like a handgun. Yeah. Like just wandering around, dusting rockets like he's fucking Duke yep. Nukem. He's got a bunch of them. <laughs> he just keeps them in his pocket. Uh-huh. Pocket rockets. And a <laughs> grenade launcher for slightly smaller explosions. Right. <laughs> when you need to blow up somebody a little bit less. <laughs> Choose a grenade launcher. Um, unfortunately, Kiefer smokes out some of the villages, villagers out of the cave and dusts them, but they appear to be just... Women and people children. And people and, and women. So he's he, his Kano's round two, yeah. Kiefer's round two, is completely ineffective. Uh-huh. Even the bully is like, yeah, that doesn't look like much. Meh. Yeah, burn him. Eh, you suck. But now Dolph's pissed, and he's like, the only way we're going to win this, because we're running low on ammo, is to take out them all at once. Yep. Time to start killing them fast. Why didn't you do that the first time? Right. And they're coming on the beach, and you have uh-huh. a rocket launcher Correct. and guns. Plenty of range. Plenty of time. They were actually, it was actually a turkey shoot. Yes, it literally was. Fish in a barrel. Um, here's where shenanigans ensue. Mm-hmm. The f- The climactic fight battle is insane. This is one of the dumbest action <laughs> sequences I've ever seen. And it's long and it's glorious. Yes. 
We got We can't cover everything. No. We, we got some highlights. Who wants to take a, take a highlight? When they pan in on the new girlfriend's kid sitting there amongst all the fighting and everybody's dying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they pan into him like, for 25 cents a day, oh, God. you two it's... can save this child. And you just see these people like axes hacking off people's arms and right. legs behind this it's kid. It's all in slow motion, high depth of field behind the kid. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? He's just standing in the middle of this war going, when elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. <laughs> You're like, who brought the kid? <laughs> Why is there a kid in the you battlefield? You guys have a cave for the kids. Don't bring him into the battlefield. So, he's, Billy, you ever seen a battle before? <laughs> yeah. He's four. It's like, I guess it'd be something if he was like 13 or 14, you could have that debate. He's too young for this, but he's four. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty awesome. I like that scene. Um, I like it when uh, Tiny Zeus Lister blasts uh the the other guy in the in the knee and then the t- the children have to come to his aid and Zeus Lister chucks a child on top of a roof yeah. an actual <laughs> child he throws a child actor uh-huh. Zeus Lister <laughs> it's not a dummy there's an overhead shot and you're like Oh, God, he's going to throw that kid. He chucked a kid. <laughs> oh, my God, he threw a kid. And then the rest of the kids get him down on the ground, and that kid that's up on the roof jumps off the roof right onto his bag. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh-huh. And it, it no, I, this this is why this movie's so weird is because of things like that. You can't uh-huh. ha- take anything seriously in this movie where you have a kid jump off a roof and do a big man's ball sack. They had two large bamboo poles that they use to get him tied up to tra- take him down before the kid does a flying pin dive onto his <laughs> bean bag and you're like whoa my note is the Ewoks take down the walker because right? <laughs> that's about how it plays out <laughs> it's just like it <sighs> and then the best scene nobody well, before we do the best scene yeah. I'll do the other okay like, wait a minute, what? So the drugged out guy mm-hmm. has a climactic <laughs> battle <laughs> with, with, Zeus Lister. with Zeus Lister. And it's one of the strange, because I've, I've seen this a few times now, and every time I'm like, you, the first time you see it, you can kind of tell that there's going to be something have out between these two. Uh-huh. And the, the way that they've built it up. It's you're a like, drug dealer who's falling in love with. <laughs> yeah, you, you're like... The little guy needs to be able to just kill him uh-huh. in this movie, but it doesn't play out like that. Like, right. He actually loses the fight, but then his girlfriend completely murderifies Tiny Zeus Lister she, by... It's awesome. She atta- She puts a rope around his neck that's attached to the boat and like hits the engine, and he's like, oh, fuck. And he gets like hung and drowned at the same time. Right, in the middle of the ocean, and his body is going to be eaten by sharks. But he snapped the dude's neck right before that, so she's like... The anguish, right? Like, of screaming. This, I met this dude yesterday, and she's like in slow motion, and they're like, "There's the sun hitting the beach," and she's like, "No!" Yeah, it's the same shot <laughs> when Andy Dufresne comes out of the sewer, yeah. and it's raining, and he's got freedom. He's looking yeah. up at the sky. It's that same exact shot and the same level of drama to this drug dealer who met a guy yesterday, <laughs> and then it cuts. To Kano, and he's like, oh, true love, and he shoots her. <laughs> and then it cuts to another, like, oh, shot of them laying together, bleeding to death right. on the beach. And you're like, right. what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this movie is ridiculous. I don't understand what it's trying to do. Um, yeah, so Dolph's got the rocket launcher. He's in a hut, and he's he's going to blast Tiny Zeus before Tiny Zeus dies. And he fucking has a man coming up on him. Yeah. There's a guy sneaking up on him from behind with a gun. He's about to blast Dolph Lundgren in the back of the head, but Dolph shoots the rocket, blows up tiny Zeus Lister. Yeah. Who is okay from rocket explosion. He just gets a little crispy from it. Right. It's just this rocket launcher just doesn't work very well. I guess sometimes, yeah, but the back side of it blows into the dude's face and basically blasts all of his skin off. It's just, he's 
completely charred. Like he <laughs> is so burnt that he's a stick now. Right. He's just still standing there. Yeah, He can't he's... move. He's he's been burnt. <laughs> if he was a hot dog, he was left on the grill for like three hours. And and Jackie. That's what you get for standing there. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's no way to screw up the line more than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for standing there. <laughs> what? Okay, let me try again. Let me try again. I'm gonna get it this time. <laughs> Any place else but there, That's buddy. What, actually, if he would have really said that, that's the only thing he could have said that would have been dumber than what he actually says. That's what you get for standing there. <laughs> you shouldn't sneak up on people. Yes. That- <laughs> That's what you get for standing there. Don't sneak up on people. <laughs> it's rude. <laughs> and he doesn't like turn and like there's the quick zoom like don't sneak up on people. And you're like, whoa, I bet that played better. Or he doesn't deliver it like stick around yeah. or let off some steam, Bennett. It doesn't. The shot doesn't hold. He just in passing turns to this man who's been burnt to a crisp so hard <laughs> that he can no longer move and goes, don't sneak up on people. <laughs> what's and on? then walks off. <laughs> like it's passing advice. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not dead, you'll remember this. It is one of, it's arguably one of the most milk out the nose shots. <laughs> yes. It's a spit take uh-huh. in any movie we've ever viewed because it was, it's so outlandish. The first time I saw it, I fell off the couch. <laughs> Don't sneak up on people. <laughs> hey, top tip. <laughs> top tip. <laughs> Uh man. Uh, so in the af- after all, everybody's getting detonated. Uh, the colonel has captured Dolph's island girlfriend, taken her to a cave. Oh, and the four year old child. Yes, and is like, all right, Dolph, work with me here, or I'm gonna blast this kid and her, and then you if you don't. And Dolph's like, what? No. Oh wait, what? Beady Wong's here. What are you doing in here, B.D. Wong? He's like, oh, hey. Oh, hey, guys. What's up, boss? I just grabbed those two guys that are the cause of all this, took their heads for trophies, and here they are. Here they are. And he's got their decapitated heads, and he's holding them. And he <laughs> seems completely fine with that. And you're like, whoa, you are the biggest psycho in this movie, and that takes some doing. Yeah, I, Good covered, job. I covered myself in blood and then had a blood orgy in yeah. it. And uh, I thought you, I thought you'd like to know. And, and the Kevin Teague's character's like, Oh, shit. Yeah. That's checkmate. All right. We'll see you guys later. It's over. All right. Good deal. I guess that wraps this caper up. Yeah, well, that, well, that turned into it. That shit went sideways on us, didn't it? Good I, thing we didn't have to kill each other. All right. I'll see you next time. But Kiefer's like, what? No, oh. it's not over. I loved you like a father? Question mark. And then blows up fucking Colonel T with the fucking rocket launcher. From point blank range. Point blank. Everybody in a, in a room... Of a cave that's like 10 by 10. Yeah, they all die. They all died. But even in the story world, he was too close because he blew himself over. Right. <laughs> and he like gets up and he's visibly stirred like, oh, fuck. I was way too close to that guy. I just blew up. <laughs> I loved him like a father. So I exploded him. Yep. Well, and he's all upset. He's like, was this all for nothing? I'm like, what the fuck did you lose? Yeah. Nobody? You, you know, had some... Dudes, you don't give a shit about. You're willing to shoot them in the head earlier in the film. Now you give a shit about these yeah. people that have come to fight on your honor? Why do you need the two dickheads? You are now part of the dubious corporation, and the guy, the main guy is still here. Uh-huh. The bird shit's still just sitting there on this island, guys. Why is Colonel Tig just like, well, fuck it, it's over. Their, yeah. their heads are here, but the rest of them's not, he so... Doesn't, he doesn't have an equal sign either. <laughs> So I don't know what came after the bird shit. They yeah. were the ones that knew what to do with the bird shit. They yeah, they uh they had the step three, I think. I think, I, I don't think. know. <laughs> uh yeah, so he's blown up. And then as you do, if you were grieving the loss of a parental figure that you yourself just blew up with a rocket launcher, <laughs> right? uh you do exactly what he does and that's like wand over and start trying to like step in the remains. <laughs> He's like squishing around like, yep, yeah, he's pretty it, blown up. It's like Darth Vader kicking Obi-Wan's robe. Like, is he in there? Is yeah. he in this pile of ash someplace? Uh-huh. 
Like, he wants there to be large chunks of the kernel left so he can stand in them. Right. But they're not there, and he's getting frustrated. And then he falls <laughs> through the, the ground into another cave. Is that a trap? How can it be a trap? What's Dolph doing under there? He just got blown there. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> either that or he's a fucking coward and he was making his way out. You know? Rocket launcher, I gotta go. Yeah, no, I mean the way I'm explaining it is he like he tries to go stand in his dead idol's guts and then falls through the floor where Dolph Lundgren is waiting for him. <laughs> That's how it plays on screen. I don't know what he's doing there? If it's not a trap, and how was the colonel standing on top of this f- fucking six inch floor? I don't know. Oh, man, it's, it's bananas. But once he falls down there, Lundgren's like waiting for him with a one-liner like, oh, now you're going to eat shit, buddy. Like, <laughs> How long have you been? What we were just in the here? last shot, Dolph. You were just upstairs just two seconds ago. Uh, it's outlandish. Anyway, so they get in the they get in the end fight. It the, takes a long time. Yeah, uh, that we won't recap everything, but I do love... The one piece, this is like where the the dead are. It's like they're crypt. Mm -hmm. And so he grabs this like axe that's made out of bone or something and like has Kiefer down. Like he's going to split his head open and he bonks him with this axe and it just shatters in his hand. (laughs) It's just old. (laughs) And and you can see like Kiefer's arms are open and you can tell he's like, oh no, this is the end. My. I'm going to be cleaved in two. Uh, and then it breaks on him. And he's like, wait, what? And then Lugger just goes, <laughs> fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the fight proceeds. It's hilarious. Uh, it ends, though, with uh, uh, Dolph beating Kiefer with the help of a uh, rib cage or something. A sharp he, bone. A yeah. yeah. leg bone. Yeah, he jabs through his face. It's pretty cool. So now it's time for Island Viking funerals. And goodbyes because Dolph staying on the island he's gonna live there now Uh uh-huh so his team says goodbye who's ever's left of them the two the two Catherine Bell and the end the end very dramatic music we should talk about the music first I really think that this is the parts from Predator that they just peeled off everything without having the actual theme come in. I think it's some of that, and I think it's stolen from Back to the Future as well. The The action stings yeah. are very Alan Silvestri-esque. It seems like it's basically pulled the uh, peripheral pieces of several soundtracks and strung them together into mm-hmm. its own. And it sounds great. Yeah. It's, but it's way not fitting because it's super dramatic to this fucking silly movie. Or sometimes you're watching and you're like, God damn it, that's Predator. I'm pretty sure it's Predator. I know Predator. that's Predator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, questions. Why did Kiefer have a cross of hair on his What chest? is his deal? <laughs> <laughs> what is his deal? Like, that's one question. Beyond anything else, yes, he is... He has shaved his chest hair into a into a cross. Right. Because he's religious or is it intimidating or what? Why not just get a tattoo of like some skulls that say I'm going to fuck your butthole or something after I kill you with my big gun. But a cross out of chest hair is the lamest. (laughs) I'm a tough guy. Yeah. Ever. He also pulls his pants up very, very, (laughs) very high. It is the mid nineties, I guess. Eh, very high. <laughs> I I think it's just like eh, I'm tough. I guess with chest hair <laughs> shaving. I don't know about this. He this got a terrible bad guy. One where he came out of the bathroom like shit housed, <laughs> and he's like, "Raw, I'm out. This raw is tough, right?" And everybody's like, "What?" <laughs> Oh, fuck you guys. And shoots one of them. And- Maybe he got super drunk in college because he's in college, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and he passed out and his uh, fraternity brothers were going to shave his chest hair into a cock. But he woke up mid mid shaving and so they couldn't get it done. So it just looks like a cross. He just keeps shaving it that way. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like a couple nights ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, he's in college. He's in a this, frat guy. In this, the actual story world of this movie is two days after the end of Dead Man on Campus. Yeah, his uh, roommate was Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Who's your favorite mercenary? I'm going to go with the guy that's fucking high on reefer the whole time. Okay. <laughs> Jackie? I'm going to go with Kiefer. Yeah? Because he's just so goddamn intense, and he's <laughs> he's had like a 15 the entire time, and you... And he never lets up. He never lets up. He he never lets his energy drop. I mean, he is just intense. How did you describe his acting style, Sam? That he it, that it was a nonstop orgasm for yeah. him. Like that's what he's doing. He's having an, an orgasm continuously throughout his entire life. Yeah, he's making O faces throughout yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> he starts out <sighs> on screen licking someone's face. Uh huh. And it's hard to elevate your crazy from that. And then he does, does. constantly. Yeah. I got to go with Kiefer too, Jack. Yeah. He's, oh, I think he's the best part of this movie. He's absolutely outlandish. He's over the top. And it's great. Sammy? Well, I said the briefer guy. No, no, no. What's your question? Oh. So do more people come after the bird shit? I don't know because <laughs> no, because the, everybody's dead that cared about the bird shit. Because here's the thing. Nobody else cares about the fucking bird shit. We can't no. use it for anything. It's bird shit. But it's got nitrogen in it. No, it doesn't. That's what they said. Even if it does, it would be so sparse that you couldn't. I mean, what are you going to do? Just have a spatula and scrape bird shit into a, yep. a fucking fucking pan mm -hmm. and then whoa look at all this nitrogen yep it, i don't know i'm not a chemist no nobody's nobody's coming back they're good <laughs> they all killed right. the idiots <laughs> well how long is it going to take him to get bored Dolph. yeah um i don't really see why he couldn't just do what he did in chicago like i mean he can just stand around there too yeah it seems like his thing i'm gonna stand around outside they've got good shit there but he's got yeah. something to poke on now. Yeah, and he's got a bang lady. So And there's secretly bloodlust tribe, so he right. gets that too. Yeah, no, he's, yeah, he fits right in. This is where he belongs. So then lead me to another question I just came up with. Are those three later going to invade the Hooker Island and just murder the fuck out of everybody? No, as long as they stay on their side of the water. It, it's fine, right? Because they're overall they're peaceful, right? They don't do anything unless they're provoked. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and yeah. they don't want everybody in the in the islands, right, to know that they're fucking vicious killers. Yeah, right. Because right now it just looks like they're a bunch of village idiots, right? And so sure. everybody's like, yeah, don't go over there. Those people are fucking dumb. Yeah. That so they leave playing. them alone. It's covered in bird shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shit island. Don't go over to shit island. Yeah, no. I got a question, though. Would you guys live on the bird shit island? Fuck yeah, I would. If you had the choice, you're like, you okay, you can either go man, back. Did you see that place, Jackie? Woof. It had pineapple and shit. Where'd they shoot this, Sam? Thailand. God damn it. See, I told you I want to go to Thailand. Yeah, dude. Thailand looks fucking sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's We've beautiful. The water that. was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. Pun Mang Bay or something. That It's in all sorts of movies, those monolithic rocks coming out of the ocean. Yeah, sign me the fuck right up. Hell yeah, I'm going to shit island. I'm not coming back. I don't get what Tom Hanks was thinking, fucking ditching his island. He had his friend, his little buddy, Wilson. He was there. He had company. And and those people from Lost, why, why are they trying to get back to fucking U.S.? This place sucks. Mm. It's like, I can either stay on a tropical island and have paradise, or, or I can go back to my low-paying job where my boss yells at me all fucking day. Low paying uh, job? I can worry about bullshit that doesn't matter all the time and get right. an ulcer from it. Correct. The TPS reports don't matter. Right. Yeah, no, dude. Stay on the island, bud. I still think they're going to go murder everybody. I, I'm with Jackie. I like, okay. her, I like her take. Any other questions, guys? I think this thing kind of closes itself up pretty good. Yeah. I think it does, too. Yeah. Final recommendations from me. I'll start. Absolutely. I liked this movie more the second time I saw it. There's something weird about it where it stinks, but there's like lots of content. It's it's deeper than just a bang bang shoot 'em up movie with explosions and shit. Like there's commentary about mercenaries in general and and ar armies for hire and uh, uh, corporate greed. And, uh, uh, you know, trampling on uh, Mother Nature and indigenous peoples mm -hmm. and, and 
fucking with shit that isn't yours to fuck with. Um, then there's all this stupid bullshit that happens as well. I, I absolutely, I fucking love this movie. Yeah. I think with that, uh, we are talking, it's like some of the John sales writing makes it through. And so there's these sequences where there's that and that they just sort of shot it really well. And it's all of a sudden right. like, right. You're watching a scene from a good movie every once in a while. Uh-huh. And then like two scenes later, you're like, what the fuck is that? Don't sneak like, up on people. Really? <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> I was confused because just a second ago, I was like, I think this might be a good movie. And then I'm told, nope, this nope. is a stinker. <laughs> this one's real bad. Jackie? I'm going to give it a do. Yeah. I thought some of the sequences, uh, nut landings, <laughs> uh, transparent prostitutes, uh-huh. uh, pirate, Mexican pirate. Oh, dude, he's fantastic. <laughs> which was just Doesn't fit awesome. in anything no. else in any way. And Psycho Kiefer, uh-huh. really just in the high guy doing uh the noah right was i mean it's just like these all these little weird things that are part of like this supposed to be really serious movie and right. you're like this is so funny yeah. and i'm in i i really enjoyed it i'd watch it again yeah i like it the look on your face when the don't sneak up on me was priceless you couldn't even laugh you were just staring blankly at the television like they didn't just do that, did they? they? You can't do that. You can't That's do that. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and the way he said it was not like it was like a joke or anything. Yeah, or like it, it was... yeah exactly. It's not like Arnold delivered it. Yeah. It's just in passing. Yeah, <laughs> don't sneak up on people. Yeah, I think it's an absolute do. I love it. It was from my you know year in review however many years ago. And again, every time it gets better every time you watch it. Yeah. I The thing I noticed this time around was that I was really getting fixated on the Mexican pirate's um, burnt head in his climactic fight <laughs> right. with Catherine Bell. And I was uh, like, he had like just a weird burnt pus hole for in here. <laughs> and I was like, I wonder if he squeezes that or what's going on there. He just got it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, you're in bad shape. Why are you still doing we this? We didn't even mention that he dies by explosion. She yeah. puts a fucking grenade yeah. in his in the back of his shirt, and that's how he gets it. He gets three times exploded uh-huh. in the span of 24 hours. <laughs> and part of his body lands on her leg. <laughs> She's like, oh, gross. gross. Yeah. Oh, man. Hilarious. All right, uh, we got one streaming do's and don't from Sam. I think we actually talked about this movie before, maybe. I've never I've seen, seen it. it. Yeah. Uh, why don't you take point so, here? So, Exterminators of the Year 3000 streaming is on. on Prime okay. is a Shout Factory. Mm-hmm. Just got on there, yeah. and I had never seen this one. It's, a, it's one of those PA Italian jobs yeah. that are all like the rest of them, except this one was a little bit more than the standard cars running into each other in the dirt fair. Uh-huh. It was an honest attempt to completely regurgitate Road Warrior. Ooh. Like, knockoff completely? Yeah, like, wow. they actually had a sequence that was trying to do the same thing with a bunch of cars. Yeah. Where shooting didn't quite do it, and you can tell that there's just some cars going six miles an hour and kind of throwing some stuff uh-huh. at each other. Yeah. Uh, the guy that plays Mad Max's knockoff character, he's a real, he's something else. Doesn't he have like a special arm or something like Winter no, Soldier's arm? So the kid, there's a kid that knows where the water is. <laughs> oh that's boy. what they're after is the water. And they're driving around with endless amounts of gasoline looking for some water. And uh, the kid apparently is either a robot or has a robot arm. That's never really, <laughs> never really sort of flushed out all the way what's going on with this kid, but there's a sequence where they're about to draw and quarter this kid. You're like, well, you're a really bad, bad guy. Right. You're going to rip a kid in half for not telling you where the water is. And then they do. And you're like, oh my God. What? Oh shit. And then you see wires like, oh, I guess it's okay. It's, oh, a, it's robot. a robot. Robot. Yeah. But it's not okay. Cause he didn't know it was a robot right. kid, man. That's so a bad guy. They, then there's some guy in the desert that can kind of put him back together, but he can't do it without modifying him. Okay. And so when he modifies him. Gives him a gun arm. Yeah. No, he just makes his arm work again, but now it works too good. So he can just like crush shit and throw rocks at like <laughs> bullet speeds. Awesome. And you're like, oh, this is so dumb. This kid's going to be like a, a human weapon. And then they really underutilize him. From oh, that point no. On. I mean, the whole thing is still a do. Like, I think for all of those 
And usually when Shout gets a hold of something, mm-hmm. there's a reason. Right. And this one is a good couple of rungs above the standard driving around in the desert bullshit because of all these uh, weird things that happen. There's some mutants later. And it, uh, it like, the guy that's supposed to be the who plays Bennett in uh, Commando, Commando mm-hmm. John, his yeah. character in Road Warrior, they made him look exactly the same. As Bennett? Yeah. He just looks like a fat... No, no. Bennett from Road Warrior when he's still oh, in good oh, shape. Oh, But he has like the same eye makeup and hairdo right. whenever it's like... Oh, man. It's the same guy. You're the same guy. <laughs> but he's not as crazy. And he calls everybody mother grabbers oh, no. over and is like, come on, you mother grabbers. Oh, dude. Oh, it's something else. Huh. Okay. I usually don't... I'll watch those by myself for a little bit. And then be like, oh, I should watch this with somebody at some point. I'll. It's like a pre-screening. Right. But the pre-screen on that one last night was like, nope, this is a good one. I'm going to watch this whole thing. Nice. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll try to cram in some more streaming do's and don'ts this week. We've got some listener feedback, uh, starting with an email from Jack B. So another franchise gets the reboot. Coming June of this year, a reboot of Child's Play where Chucky is no longer a doll possessed by Brad DeReef. Instead, Chucky is an out-of-control robot doll bent on murder. This is apparently due to be followed by a sci-fi original series, which will continue the story. Why do men in ties want think we want these? Because I do. Because Jackie does. Well, that's the thing. Well, maybe somebody does, but also it's like, as a producer, if you get a hold of one of these properties and you can push it through, you don't care. This is cash for you. Right. Like, I don't care if anybody wants to see this. I sold it. It's sold. It's now cash for me. He goes on. The only positive I can think of is that they got Mark Hamill to voice Chucky, which I think is a great cast. Here's my th- thing on it. It's not a great cast. Just because Mark Hamill is the single greatest voice actor in the history of voice actors does not mean it's a great cast. It's a cash grab. Mark Hamill is only hired for this because he's currently hot because everybody knows who he is. Everybody gives a shit now. And oh yeah, he can also voice act 10 years ago. They wouldn't have fucking hired him. And it's a slap in the fucking face of Brad DeReef. Like, sorry, Brad DeReef. You did this perfectly perfectly for seven versions of this and you're an amazing voice actor on yourself but hey you know what people like star wars people like the luke yeah well, that, I, I, you... that pisses me off that's more men in tie shit than anything uh-huh. it pisses me off it pisses me off i'm gonna withhold judgment until after i hear the voice he's gonna do a great job and but so would brad reef but I do feel bad for Brad Dereef because he is the original Chucky and that's the one that we've all come to know and it is kind of a dicey call. Yeah. Dude, I'm sure Mark Hamill is, is going to do a great job. He, great job. He's the best voice actor that's ever lived. Other than Terry Scher. Uh, I st- I don't know, dude. I'll take Hamill. Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria. I'll take Hamill. Just because know. Hank Azaria can do more voices. I, I actually dude, take Brad Dereef on, on the top of all the four dude, of them. Dude, Brad Dereef's a really good voice He's actor. also a very good actor in yeah, general. I, it sucks. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We might have to do a, stri- uh, we might have to field, field trip, trip it. One. Field trip. Yeah. It's probably going to piss me off. Cause if you don't have fun with Chuck, you're not getting Chucky. Chucky is fun. It's yeah. fun. It's stupid. I hope they make it psycho. It's a robot, Jackie. Yeah. A psycho robot that actually like is not that funny, but it fucking kills everybody. I want it to be, I just want it to be Chucky. I just want Chuck Charles L- Leroy. You guys remember Little Wonder? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that movie sucked. Or that TV show sucked pretty well, hard. It's a robot girl. It's a robot girl. Mm-hmm. She got she was the one that got uh, tied up to horses and ripped apart, right? No. Oh, bummer. No. And in fact I don't remember what happened in Little Wonder other than she was a robot. Yeah, so it was it probably bad. sucked pretty bad. Yeah, it was real bad. Um, got another email from listener Michael M. Uh he says, Hi guys, it's old friend Michael M. I'm not Hi. dead. Literally says I'm not dead. Glad, what? glad he clarified That's that. <laughs> good news. Good news. Was uh, there a chance you might have been dead? Were you held prisoner in your basement for six months? Yeah. I mean, like, 
your grandma was holding you hostage, but then she had a major stroke, and when oh. they came to clean out her house, you were down there? Dude, and if, your, mom's, if you? your grandma's holding you hostage, and she has a major stroke, and you get to have freedom, I think you're cool with that. Fuck grandma. It just depends <laughs> on how many pizza bites she had in the basement. That's really. true. When you live... In your grandma's basement by your own choice. That is not being held hostage if by your grandma, Sam. <laughs> holding me hostage and my alternative is TPS reports and <laughs> then <laughs> taking inventory on the pizza bites. Gra- grandma's basement is your island, private island. She's like, <laughs> oh, well, how was your own personal health day? <laughs> Pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I, you, grandma. Can I get some more Kool-Aid? <laughs> Did you change the password on the Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still thoroughly enjoy and support the podcast in spirit, even if I financially at, can't at this moment. And that's totally okay. Thank that is you very totally much. fine. Um, happy belated birthday to Jax. Yes. Woo, woo. Hey, just an update there, folks. I did go to somebody else's birthday party this last weekend, and I ended up getting like, you got almost like as many presents a as bunch of party. gifts from like all these people that, and it wasn't even my birthday. Yeah. Total mm. dick move. It was so awesome. You railroaded somebody else's birthday, just like you've railroaded Michael M's email that I'm still Whoa. trying to read. <laughs> hey, I've noticed something. When you did Faithful Findings, you said that that wouldn't be the last we heard about Mr. Breen on the podcast. Now, I recently watched a little 2016 film of his called Pass Through. If you haven't caught that movie yet, do it. Stop right now and find it on the YouTubes. Personally, if Faithful Findings was bananas, Push Through is a banana cream pie thrown in a nun's face. It's dialed up to 11, and then Neil ate the dial, my friends. Oh, my God. (laughs) Faithful Findings is a tame, thoughtful display of filmmaking in comparison. I'm not even saying do an episode on it. It might be too bad indie slash raw. Just watch it and enjoy it. Unfortunately for you, Michael M., no, I'm doing an episode on it. It's my next movie because it's time for the Breen to come back. Uh, secondly, as Pet Cemetery is a favorite bad movie episode of mine, I recommend trying out Pet Cemetery 2 for the podcast. I think Pet Cemetery was recently remade, so it'd be topical at least. It's more fun than number one, and it has some positives, such as the underrated Clancy Brown, totally. Uh, going full ham as an undead douchebag with a main accent, laughable PG-rated teen bullying, and just the absolute worst 1990 to 1993 era pre-grunge edgy butt rock soundtrack. Give it a thought. It's not great, but it's kind of fun. Uh, we did a streaming do's and don't on uh, Pet Cemetery 2 with uh, fucking Sean Connor. What's that shithead's name? Furlong? Yeah, Edward Furlong. He's the he's the main kid. You remember watching that? We, we, we were excited about Pet Cemetery 2, and the only... The only part that I really liked about it was Clancy Brown. I did not like it near as much as the first. No, mm-hmm. I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't remember it either. Yeah, he, Clancy Brown um, is his stepdad or his real dad, but he's abusive. Yeah. So the bullies kill him. But I think Furlong's like, dude, you were my cash source. So I'm going to put you in the my not burial ground and so clancy brown comes back to life and is like he kind of just hangs out he's not even like like little lord fauntleroy from the first one (laughs) baby gage he just kind of is like goes to his house and starts drinking and knocking edward furlong around again (laughs) as an undead stepfather zombie dad yeah yeah um but uh just anytime edward furlong just takes it down like six stars even like on the shitty list he's like coolio i can't stand him Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's that uh it's got it's like one of those trickster movies and it's got uh robert england playing the makeup monster and he's in it and it's like robert england's like dialing it to 11 and he's i'm crazy man. yeah and furlong's character just me right but it's so much me that it becomes hilarious like <laughs> you get like laughing to the point of tears at how much he's just bitching at everything. Ugh, gross. Um, to finalize, he says, uh, thanks for the America 3000 episode. That was a fun watch. Trying to find a way to watch Pink Squad, Operation Pink Squad. Uh, that looks equally great. MM. Well, MM, if you liked those movies, you'll love my next pick. What's your next pick, Jax? Oh, you're doing gas. That's gas. Right. Yes. Actually, that was gas. 
No, it's a. It's got a bunch of A's in it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's got a bunch of S's. Either way, it's the Roger Corman movie of the '70s, uh, the Russ Meyer version of Roger Corman, or the Roger Corman version of Russ Meyer. Um, that will be our next movie that we do. But next week we've got uh, Jackie will be out of town, so Sam and I will be batching it. Uh, what are we doing, Sam? This is the point where you never let me bitch about Star Wars and Marvel movies, so I'm just going to do that. Because Jackie's gone, she can't stop me from doing it. Special. Special. Because <laughs> Jackie's gone, she can't stop me special. That's that's the entire title of the yeah. next episode. <laughs> so the, the Justin won't just let Sam. rolls off it, the tongue. I think it's, the Justin won't let Sam bitch about Star Wars or Marvel movies, but Jackie's gone, so he's going to anyway special. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good week, guys. Get to the chopper. Visit us at www.stinkermadness.com. Follow Stinker Madness on Twitter at Stinker Madness. Please rate and review us on iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you for listening and get to the chopper.